All right, it is officially noon, so good afternoon and welcome everyone to another Iowa Learning Farms webinar. My name is Elena Whitaker. I'm a water and conservation educator with Iowa Learning Farms. And today we're joined with uh, by Dr. Asan Ganey and uh, with Michigan State University. And he's gonna be talking about drainage showdown, which pipe style drains faster. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them to the chat and we're gonna ask them at the end of the presentation. Otherwise, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. We're gonna be talking about, uh, we're gonna have a drainage showdown and I'm gonna be comparing different pipe styles and see which one drains faster. And then I'm gonna make um, these recommendations about what to look for when you're getting a pipe based on the style. So my name is Esan Gane and I'm at Michigan State University. I'm an associate professor and extension specialist. Before we, we, we go into the drainage showdown, I wanna go over some definitions. So we all agree on what, you know, what terms that I use, what they mean. For example, if I say sand slot pipe, this is what I mean. This is a narrow cut slot pipe. It's also known ultra narrow pipe, um, narrow cut, knife cut, and all of these I'm just gonna call sand slot pipe. And there's another pipe I'm gonna call a regular perf, perforated pipe. This is what it looks like as an example. And each one has its own applications. The one on the top left, the sand slot is used in soil with risk of drain sedimentation or drain clogging, where there's fine sand or silt. And then when I, another definition is that when I talk about rows of perforation, this is what I mean. So when I say four row pipe, this is what I mean. It means that you got four rows of perforations entering the pipe, like it shows in this diagram here. Like in this example on the left, they stagger from one valley to the other, but they're generally, they're just four rows of perforations. And then when I say eight row pipe, this is what I mean. And you can see this time there's no staggering in this eight row pipe and there's eight uh, perforations Allowing water to get in. So this is what I mean when I say four row, eight row, and also sand slot and regular perf. Another definition is, I slightly mentioned a little bit about this, is drain sedimentation. When I say drain sedimentation, this is what I mean. This is a photo of a regular perf pipe that was using a sandy loam soil, and you can see what happened. Uh, sand got in, and the pipe is three quarters full and clogged. So this is what I mean when I say drain sedimentation, and you can see on the bottom left, this is generally a problem if you got, you're got you in the sandy soil, loamy sand, sandy loam, silt, silt loam, and loam. But to find out exactly, uh, so as the, as the soil moves from the sand to the loam, the risk goes down. But still, there may be some risk even in the loam, depending on the texture of that soil and the soil properties. So I have a drain sedimentation tool on our website, Michigan State website, that actually when you, you can enter some soil properties or texture, and walk the city, and then you can you can find out if this is a problem or not. So moving on to uh, the two choices, I mentioned a little bit about this, that if you have a drain sedimentation, if there is a risk of that sedimentation, you're looking at these two options. On the left, you see a pipe that has a sock or a knitted sock wrapped around the pipe. On the right, you see a sand slot pipe where you got one of those narrow cut openings on the pipe. So uh, what, what, what we did here is that we took in these manufacturers, we got samples from them in terms of regular perf and sand slot and mock pipe. And then we did experiment on it. And this is what the experiment looked like. It's a tank where we put water and the soil inside of it and we measured how fast water comes out. And this is the experiment. So let's jump into the results. So what we found was that if you are in a situation where you got a drain sedimentation issue, let's say you got a field that varies, has a soil varying from 
uh, loam to a sandy loam, and then you need to have a protection for the sandy loam soil, this is what the result would apply to. So we found this trend of flow with the, with the increase of arrow to the right, flow into the pipe increases. So in this diagram here, the four row sandstone pipe was the slowest and the fastest was the Sakra pipe, the one on the top right. And um, this, how you may say, how fast was this more, you know, how much faster was it? It really depends on the drain spacing and the depth. So in this example, under a 30 feet spacing and a two and a half feet drain depth in like a shallow drain depth, I know in Iowa, drain depths are a little bit deeper than this, near four. But under this scenario that I wrote here, um, the, the, the first, the four row and the sock had the 29% difference in terms of the how fast water enters the, the drain. I call, we call that drain inflow. So the, the stock was 29% faster. And also, if you want to compare, you want to know about the four row sand slot and the eight row, where in this case, the eight row sand slot pipe had uh, about 11% faster water entry. So it's not just the stock that was faster. Also, the eight row was in the middle of the two. So really, when we look at the one with the SOC, when we tested that, that one really acted um, like it was an it was a conduit that was completely open without any plastic, just like a mold drain. If you see the mold drain, you see a mold drain. The whole entire walls of that conduit of that channel is open for water entry. So when we put the sock on the pipe, it it acted as if, or it functioned as if it was like a mold drain pipe. So that was the. Um, so if you put a pipe with a sock on it, you're maximizing water entry into the pipe. Just like I'm showing in this speedometer here, this is like the fastest at the very end of the speed of that water entry in that scenario. So um, to give you a little bit more information, because I want to move into some of the um, drain pipe properties. So if you just type in, MSU drainage on any search engine. And then the first search that comes up, it's mold drain. Uh, and then you hit drainage. Actually the first, um, in this case, it comes mold drainage, but you go to the, it goes to the same website. So you can see here. And if you want to learn more, you would go under conventional drainage and then you will hover over choice of pipe style. And then the first option is knitted sock or sand slot. So there are more information here that I can present here, um, like their protection, um, like let me go down. So one of the things that we found was that the sock wrap pipe lowered the water table most quickly out of all of the pipes that we compared. We're talking about, you know, a few hours faster within, um, that time range here that we have in here. So another thing that is in on the website, you'll find it will be installation considerations, installation issues and solutions that you may be interested in early period after installation, what you would be looking for, over a stretching of the sand slot pipe during installation, UV resistance of the knitted sock, anti-clogging feature of the knitted sock, there's some information there, soil retention compared to sand slot, this one I can briefly mention. What I've written here is that basically the when these two were compared uh, in research study, they found that the sock, both of them did protect against what, soil entry into the pipe. However, the sock was better. The one with the sock was cleaner inside than the one with the sand slot pipe. That is uh, the one that was the research that was found in that, that I wrote in that paragraph. So basically I'm scrolling down so you can see some of the basically finding. Another thing we looked at was that we took in two, um, we took in two scenarios, both with the same spacing, drain spacing and depth. And we noticed that the one with the sock had a modest yield increase, which is the one in this box here, which is up to about 2% yield increase. It's not a lot, but there is some. And the reason for that obviously is that the system is draining faster, like I mentioned. Like I mentioned that example, 29% faster. So it does make a difference, but it does cost more. 
And the economics really depends on the situation, really depends on what crop there is, the soil type. So it is complicated to actually come up with a return. That would need a site-specific analysis to get that economic return on investment. So moving on to the pipe properties. So I mentioned a little bit about the sock versus the sand slot and four row and eight row. So I want a little bit talk about just a little bit of the pipe properties outside of the sock discussion. So to do that, I want to get you involved in this. So um, if you're on your phone, you, you can take your phone and you can see a QR code on the top right. I'm going to give you a, a few seconds. Please go ahead and scan that QR code. Or if you're on a desktop, you can just type in the address that it says poleb.com slash sweetfield371. You can, en you can enter that or you can just do a text, which is um, send this message to this number. Either one would work. So I'm going to give you a few seconds um, to get you involved in this. And then when you do scan this, it's going to ask you to um, enter a name. You can just skip those. There's no need to enter your name. You can just say skip. You're probably going to have two. Um, you don't have to register. Just say skip for now and keep uh, moving forward until you see the question. So the question is, it says in here, which pipe drains faster? I got, I'm showing you two, uh, a diagram with two pipes. Um, remember that these two pipes have equal water inlet area per foot. So what is water inlet, water inlet area? That's basically if you sum up all of the openings areas in square inch, all of them, you add all of them up in a one foot length of the pipe. That's what's called, that's what we call water inlet area. So if you got two pipes with the same water inlet area, that then they're just different. They have different styles. Um, now you would see that you got an 18, 18 smaller slots per foot. This is the top option. And then the bottom option is the eight larger slots. So basically, very briefly, these are similar in terms of the water in the air per foot, but it's just that one of them has taken the same number of openings on the one on the bottom and they just split them in half, make them instead of one large hole, now it's got two smaller holes, which adds up to the same area of the larger hole. That's basically what's happening. So uh, it's very nice to get different variations of answers here. So ABC, but I got a spread of answers. Most 73% of you have answered the A option, the 18 slot. So that is the correct answer here. So let's go over the, the, the concept here. Really what's happening here is that if we can split those openings into more, the more number of smaller openings, then we're doing a better job you know, in the pipe to let the water in. So the answer is the 18 slot. And they are not the same, really. And so let's move on. Thank you for entering that. I see these still changing, but I'm going to have to. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So basically, the message there was that if you have a greater subdivision of openings, it's going to be better because it's going to have higher flow. Like in these two diagrams, this is the same one. So the one on the top is going to let more water in faster. So I'm going to have a higher flow rate inside the pipe than the one in the bottom because it's got the same area though, the same water in that area, but the, the one on the top has greater subdivision of opening. So that's the message I want you to take home for that slide. And then, um, so the most important property, so uh, that increases drain inflow this one is really, the answer is just the rows of perforations. So out of all the pipe properties or the styles, the one that is the most important one we found is that if you have the one on the bottom, which is the eight row, that's going to be a lot faster. And I gave you a little bit of the story when I was talking about the sand slot and the sock. Remember I said it was 11% faster with the one in the eight row than the four row. So the same thing applies here. 
The one on the bottom is the eight row is going to be faster than the one on the top because it's got a greater subdivision on openings and it's probably it could have even more wall in that area as well. So again, the message here is that increased number of perforation rows. So if you're looking for pipes or you are a manufacturer making these, this is the one I would suggest um, making. There are only two companies that make the ATRO in Ohio. I am not aware of any companies farther in the upper Midwest, those regions that would make the ATRO, but I, I believe it's a very good pipe based on what we found in our research. So let's, So hopefully you didn't close that um, web browser on your phone or your desktop. Because if you didn't close it, this, this next question is going to automatically show. Uh, if you close it, you can just scan and go back to it again. So let's do another one. So this one says, which pipe drains faster? You got two pipes and both uh, have equal water inlet area per foot. So remember, so it's got similar to the other one. Both have equal water inlet area, but this time... Um, both have equal water inlet area, but this time the one on the top has longer, narrower slots, and the one in the bottom has shorter, wider slots. So I'm going to give a few seconds for you to uh, type in your answer for this one. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of variation of answers here. Go ahead, give you a little more time. Okay, so it's changing. So most, so I, I'm getting most answers, 80, about 88% of the participants check the A option. Um, so, so the A option is the answer. Thank you for um, putting your answers in. Thank you so much. So for A, the longer, narrower one. And so if you look at one, the graph on the left, you see the one on the top will be slightly faster than the one on the bottom, really, because um, it's longer. So as you make these longer, you're providing, you're shortening the path of water to get into the pipe. It's It's better than the one that are, narrow, uh, shorter, and then they're wider. Um, so basically this is the slide that summarizes that question. Longer is better than being a shorter uh, slot openings. So in these two cases, the one on the top is gonna drain a little bit faster. So another, I just I thought I throw in another question. There are a lot of information on the website I'm going to pick one of them because we don't have time to go over all of the information about pipe style. So um, looking at regular perf and then a sand slot pipe, some of the things that I've heard is that some, um, I've heard people tell me that they think um, the regular perf is going to drain faster than the sand slot pipe, assuming that they're both four row or they're both eight row, right? So in, in a category of four row, imagine you got a sand slot pipe and a regular perf, I've heard that one of them is going to drain faster. In this case, regular perf is going to drain faster than the sand slot, but that is not true. We did work on this. We did research and we found these are very similar. Um, the pipes that I showed, the manufacturers that I showed on the earlier list, any earlier slide, that's based on those manufacturers. So we found that these are very similar. It's not that one of them. And the reason was that the, the, the test that I just gave you, the question that you answered really. Remember I said that narrower and longer is better than wider and, uh, wider and shorter? So it's really, this is what's happening here because the sandstone pipe is longer, so it's actually good. So it doesn't really hurt water entry into the pipe. These are similar. Uh, of course, there are different applications of each one. The sand slot needs to be in a soil that has a drain sedimentation problem. Regular perf can be used in a soil that doesn't have that problem. But in terms of water entry, we cannot, uh, these are similar. So the take home messages um, of this, of all of the styles of the pipe. Um, well, before I mention the take home messages, I'd like to show you the other section. So again, if you just search for MSU, MSU drainage, 
um, you go to the first link, it takes you to drainage website. Um, you hover over drainage, conventional drainage, and then you click on choice of pipe style, and then you go into the second option this time, the four row versus the regular, the eight row versus four row. And there are a lot of information here um, that I invite you to check out. You can see increasing the slot length, increasing the draining flow, increasing water in that area does not necessarily increase drain flow. So there are a lot of information here. Uh, going back to the take home messages, really the, the most important point I want to make here is the number of rows. That is by far the most important and most influential in water entry into the pipe. Um, and I mentioned that the eighth row is much faster, much better than the four row for the same price. So this is something I, um, I want to mention and I emphasize it's very important because the four and eight row, it's the same weight of plastic. It's, it doesn't have a sock. Or it doesn't have a fabric around it. It's just eight row versus four row. So the pipe material, it's, it's the same cost. So you're getting um, faster water into the pipe for the same price. That is a, that is a win scenario for me. So I would go with the eight row. And uh, second most important one was the slot length that I talked about. I said the longer is better. One thing we, uh, the research shows that longer slides are better than shorter slides, slots. And also the slot width has very, very minimal, small effect on flow, water entry into the pipe. So if, if we try to make these slots a little bit wider and assume hope that it's gonna increase water entry in the pipe, it's not. That, that's if we want to do something like that and change the dimensions, the slot length is going to be the way to go, really. This is what the research is showing. Slot length affects water entry. Slot width has very small, minimal effect on flow into the pipe. So if you have a situation where there was a drain sedimentation problem in one of those soils that I mentioned, like a sandy loam soil, I showed you that the saw grab pipe is going to be the fastest, followed by the eight row sand slot, and then Lastly, the four row sand slot. If you don't have a drain sedimentation, the eight row regular perf is gonna be faster than the four row regular perf. So remember the biggest message here is the number of rows. That is by far the most important pipe style. So the eight row is gonna be faster than the four row for the same price. So I, and I showed you the information on the website. You can check those out, just wanted to uh, give you some information. We have a field day coming up September 9 in Michigan. Um, uh, it's going to be about mold drains. It's a really a budget friendly drainage system, or we call it a cheap alternative to subsurface drainage. And that's a photo of that. We're going to be hosting that in Michigan. Um, it's it's going to be our first mold drain field day that we're gonna we're gonna have. And then following that, next year we have a drainage workshop where we teach drainage conservation, drainage basics. Dr. Helmos also has that in summertime in Iowa as well. So with that, um, I am um, with that, one last thing on the website. So there is more information on the website if you are interested in drainage or water conservation, water quality. There are a suite of tools that I wanted to just show you briefly. Um, for example, the drainage intensity. Remember I said that the change of the pipe material, you get 11%, 10% high, faster water. So you can actually physically see that here. For example, if I have a four inch, if I hit calculate, I'm getting a drainage intensity. This is how fast water uh, leaves the field in inches per day. But let me show you, remember I said that it's gonna be faster with the sock. If I hit the one with the sock, the 26% is gonna to go to 31%, 0.31 inches. This is gonna be probably about um, 15, uh, 18, 20%, it's gonna be faster. So this is, re this is the real thing here. And it's going to depend on the drain spacing, as I mentioned. So as you change these, these numbers are going to change. With that, um, I'm going to um, finish and wrap up. All right, perfect. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to keep putting them in the chat. Otherwise, uh, if you've tuned in today and you would like to earn a CCA CEU, go ahead and send uh, your name, 
the name you entered to watch the webinar if it was different, and then your CCA number to me. Uh, my email is alenaw at iastate.edu by five o'clock today. Um, so again, your name, name you entered to watch the webinar, and your number to me, Elena Whitaker, alenaw at iastate.edu. If you want to hit the next slide, please. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of our webinars for this year in 2024, if you could fill out a voluntary demographic survey, we would appreciate that. Um, you can uh, scan the QR code or go to www.iowalearningfarms.org slash survey. Next slide, please. And then next week, go ahead and join us same time of noon on the 28th, the impact of water stress and genetics on seed selection and nitrogen use uh, with Chad Poole, who's out of North Carolina State University. And then um, one last thing, this and all of our other webinars are recorded. You can find them on our website or we have our um, we have a YouTube channel dedicated just to our webinars now where you can search by topic. So this one you're going to find in the topic labeled drainage or um, by year, so 2024 and things like that. With that, we've got some questions, but I also just want to really quick, um, if you're local here in Iowa, um, coming up, there is the Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota Drainage Research Forum, September 5th, it's here in Ames, and Iowa Learning Farms, we're also doing a drainage water recycling field day on September 4th. You can find information about those on the Iowa Learning Farms website. Uh, but with some questions that have come in, how does perf pipe compare to clay tile for the inflow? Oh, you are still, what, there the, you go. <laughs> how does there. perf pipe compare to clay tile for the inflow? That's a good question. I often did get that question. Um, we we didn't really have access to clay um, to be able to do the research that we did for the plastic. Um, but I would, based on what I studied and you know did the research for the plastic, what I learned about this topic, I would I would guess that the I would guess with fairly fairly fair confidence that the, the one with the plastic is going to be faster water entry than the clay. And the reason for that is that in, in certain soil conditions, they put the, so if these are, imagine these are the two clays, in certain conditions, depending on how, um, what the distance between the two pipes would be, that, that's kind of their design. There was their design back then. How, how far away these are. You can't put them too far away, but in some cases, they're just like, closed because in a soil that could get clogged. So this is the same as sand slot pipe today, back then, they would just put it like this. So based on what I know, I would say that the, the plastic is faster because um, if you just saw, um, you, the, the opening around this is pretty small area compared to a pipe that has openings all around. So, and based on one more water inlet area and also two, uh, just like the question that you answered, remember there was a question about the greater subdivision of openings, the faster the water entry. So it's very clear, you got two pipes, you got one opening here and then another opening on the other end, whereas you got one, one clay, imagine the clay had lots of openings throughout, it's clearly that one, Without measurement, I would say, based on the theory, that one should give us a lot faster water entry. But that was a good question. Perfect. And so another question is, um, if pipe insulation depths were increased from two and a half to four, which you kind of mentioned, that's what we have here in Iowa versus Michigan, it's more two and a half feet. Uh, would you anticipate, though, the same percentage of increased drainage speed differentials? So that 11% from the four to eight slots and the 29% from the four to the sock. Um, or would the differences in the drainage speed re be reduced the further down you go? That's a good question. Um, 
I, so one of the things we can do, we can actually find out the answer to that. So let's say you got a soil, let's say um, with a half an inch. So I'm gonna hit, let me do this. Okay, so it's 0. 0.66 inches drainage intensity. Drainage intensity is the rate of water movement through the soil into the drain tile pipe. So that's the definition. If you go, if you want to get to the tool MSU drainage, just do a search, any search engine, the first one will take you there. And then when you hover over tools, drainage design, or you can just click on tools and then look for drainage intensity. So I'm going to go back to the tab that I opened earlier. So I've got 0. 0.66 inches per day on this in this scenario. But then if I take this, so the question was that if I if I'm gonna get the same percentages, if I go from here, 0. 0.66 to four inch, this is with the sock, it went to 0. 0.79, like 0. 0.13 divided by 0. 0.66, that's like 20% increase. Okay, so now let's try to test this um, for the four feet deep. Let me try that. So I'm going to say 1.23 minus, I pick this one, minus 1.17. I'm getting only 5% now when I went deeper. So this is something very interesting. Um, great question. So if you noticed, it was a lot more um, sensitive in the shallower drain depths in our region in Michigan and Ohio and places that do shallow. And did you see when I when I picked the four and I did the same drain intensity to see what how fast, what is the difference between how fast water gets into the pipe? I only got like 5% this time around. So it's uh, much less. Great question though. This is something also I learned today. But if you have if you have more combinations, um, the the person who has the question, you can just try four, three and a half. You can do testing on your own. You may another person may ask me, what if I got forty feet spacing? You can do the same thing. If someone says I don't have thirty, but I have shallow, and then I have forty instead of thirty or fifty, you can do the same thing for any combination of drain depth or spacing or any combination of such hydraulic conductivity that you may have it on your on your farm so this is really the example i gave you is under that scenario of 30 feet and the shallow that was big difference but there is a difference it's not that there isn't but the effect went down when i entered the four now that i am on the website i just wanted to mention another thing uh, on the website um so the the mold drain field now we're gonna mold drain field day is gonna show up under the news if you're interested uh, we're gonna put it up in the next few days um, and also the drainage workshop the field day like I mentioned and also there's some videos here you can check it check it out the water flows up video and drainage intensity video and other things that you may be interested about drainage. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Perfect. Okay. Um, and there's another question as they're curious to know if you noticed any differences in pipe strength um, when you increased the number of perforation slots and um, rows that had the perforation and stuff like that. Yeah. So as the, as the style of pipe varies, we, I did, we really didn't do any stiffness test. Really, these are something that they have ASTM standards that they have to follow, the manufacturer have to follow, where they put a load on this and it shouldn't have more deflection and a certain allowable deflection. We didn't do any of those, but I can tell you that if a manufacturer is making these, I trust that it's following the standard and I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, it's an eight row, it's gonna get crushed, it's weaker, it's not that way. It's following the standards and those standards have been been around and it's worked for industry. Perfect. Okay. Um, what was the minimum slope of installed tile? And is there a point where the slope offsets the need for a sock or a sand slot? Oh, that's a, yes, that's a very good question. Um, 
again, if I go to the website, I believe I have, um, so there is, so remember when you're designing a drainage system, there is a minimum grade that you need to abide by, the lateral grade. And the minimum, um, if you have, if you have a, if you have a, and the minimum grade, the reason for that is that if there's sediment getting in, there's enough velocity in this pipe to move it out. So that's why there's minimum grade. Uh, and that's one of the reasons at least for the minimum grade. So um, if you put the protection on there, on that pipe, that so you prevent the soil and, you know, getting in, really uh, you can you can take that grade, minimum grade a little bit. Uh, you can actually go, if I remember right, you can actually make, make it go a little bit flatter with less slope because now you got an extra protection that keeps sediment out. So if the water inside moves a little bit slower, you're already keeping sediment out. So I don't need this velocity to be, the velocity, if I remember right, is a half a feet per second, that's a minimum. 0 0.5 feet per second you need water move in, in the pipe. So if you have a protection, then um, there's nothing to move really. So you could do that. So we're currently working on the ASDM standard revision to reflect this. Uh, but that's a great question. I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, you got me excited asking that question. So that would be, we would get going on that revision and get that going to answer that. So you have something in writing. Perfect. Um, there's another question of how does someone know what drainage intensity uh, you need on a farm? Yes, that's a very good question. I'm, uh... I have to come to Iowa more. <laughs> Questions are very practical, very, very exciting. So um, the way, so Dr. Helmers has an excellent uh, presentation, probably there's a recording uh, on the, on YouTube that, so he talks about differences, why drainage intensity is important. And this is something Dr. Helmers teaches at, at in his drainage school. I teach it in our drainage school in Michigan. Um, so basically, the way you would know is that, let me share my screen so I can give you an, like an example. Again, let's say you're on the MSU, you did the MSU search, you, got, you came to the website and you hit tools and then you go to drainage intensity. So the reason the drainage intensity is important really is just, is really important for sizing your main because um, drainage intensity Drainage intensity has to be, well, drainage coefficient needs to be equal to or greater than drainage intensity. Uh, I actually have a, for the, the person, uh, for the audience on the call, I have a video, it's called drainage intensity. Um, I have a video here that shows drainage intent, describing drainage intensity and drainage coefficient. I, Highly suggest you watch this video. It help you. It explains why it's important to know the drainage intensity on your farm because that's how fast water can move. Remember, this is how fast water moves through the soil. You see the yellow arrow here, moves from the soil here into the pipe. But then when it gets into the pipe, from that point onwards, it's in the hands of the pipe network which is your sub main, main, you know, those pipes. So if, so let's say you got a situation where you got a drainage, and I'm gonna hit calculate. Let's say you got a drainage, this one is a pretty low, but let's say you got a drainage intensity of 0.71 inches per day. Then when you design your drainage system, you used a half an inch drainage coefficient to size your main pipe. Do you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna be creating a bottleneck it means that water is getting into the pipe faster than it can be carried away. Because in this example, you got a, water is gonna enter this lateral at the rate of 0.71 inches uh, per day, but then you size your main at half an inch. So you, you're really having water leave your farm at a half an inch because you're restricting it. But everything is gonna be explained in that video that I mentioned on the homepage. And um, so, 
going back to the question, uh, so I explained the importance of this. The question was, how do I get it? So basically, you know your drain depth and spacing, you know you're the depth restrictive layer. And if, if you don't know this number, uh, we have a, um, maybe Elena can um, put a link to, a, I had a previous Iowa Learning Farm video that I talked, I showed where you can get the depth restrictive layer on your own site specific farm. So if you hit click, um, click here, you get to this page, it says click here for the tool. So this is a, a tool that you can actually get your um, depth restrictive layer. Then you may say, okay, I know my pipe, but the last one is a little bit difficult. How do I get the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the soil? This is really about how fast water is move, moves through the soil, this number here. But how do I get this number? Um, so the easiest way that you can get the number again is from that tool. I'm gonna, uh, the tool is loading. So in the tool, you can get both numbers, this number and this number. Once you have those, you can hit calculate and you can get an estimate of what the drainage intensity is. And when you see that, and if, you have the information that the system uh, was designed with a lower with a lower drainage coefficient, then that's an under design system, really. That's what's happening in that situation. So basically these two numbers are the ones that are a little bit difficult, but you can get them through this drain spacing tool. If I move into Iowa, I'm gonna very briefly just show you randomly, um, let's say, let's say this is the farm. And if I just, just click calculate on the output page, um, I'm gonna be able to show you the numbers that you need to get your drainage intensity here. So while we're waiting, we can go to the next question. This could take some, oh, there it is. So let me just quickly finish the question. So, um, you see, I hit the advanced outputs and then the number you're looking for is this number, 0.539 saturated hydraulic and everything inches per hour. So I can just enter 0 0.359. If this was my farm, I would just 39. I was close um, in that situation. So then, then the depth to, depth to restrictive layer is 6.3 for this farm. And then I, instead of five, I'm gonna put 6.3, I'm gonna hit calculate. That's how you can use uh, basically know your drainage intensity. Getting uh, the two values here are kind of the, I mean, we've made it easy. If you don't use the tool, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get these two numbers. Perfect, yeah, that tool looks fantastic. Um, there's a couple more questions. Have you tested infiltration efficiency over time? Um, they're saying, I guess, like as the system ages, have you seen better draw between the tile lines? We we haven't looked at what the effect of time is, but then on one of the pages of my website where I was showing you in early installation, it really, um, on the real world field conditions, when you put a install a pipe, all of the soil around the pipe gets moved around. It gets lifted up and then it comes back and that soil is disturbed. And for the soil to really come back to its rightful long-term place home, it will take a long time. It, you would be looking at maybe a year or longer. It would need several cycles of rain, water movement to move the particles of the soil around this to be its in permanent home uh, for the remainder of the life of the pipe. So at the beginning, you may see more sediment coming and then later on it becomes steady state. But if it's gonna slow or not, there is, um, I can tell you based on the literature, there is no research that says it's gonna slow down. So our, the general consensus is that once you put these in, it's not gonna be like slowing over time, unless there's a, like, a, a, like the photo I showed you with the sand, unless it's just the wrong pipe in the wrong place, it's gonna slow down. Uh, water movement coming out of your outlet is gonna slow down. That's a sign of something's going on. But if it's done right, uh, it's done installed properly, designed properly, it should just remain uh, the same rate. 
Other reasons that could slow this down would be compaction. Uh, there are a lot of situations we hear in Michigan with the increased intensity of heavy rainfall in the non-going season and also the wetter spring. Sometimes people need to do the field work and the ground is a little bit wet and that creates compaction and then the water on the surface really has a hard time going through that compacted layer. So water doesn't get into the pipe. So that's another way that water removal could be slower over time, compaction layers. Or soil dispersion on the surface. Um, the, you know, there's sodium, too much magnesium on the surface that could cause, again, um, soil dispersion, water infiltration would slow down. So really water won't get to the pipe fast enough. All right. And so I think we got time for maybe one more question. Um, will the performance increases you have found in, you know, increasing the perforation rows and lengths, um, will that vary with soils of different hydraulic conductivities? Yes. I won't show the tool again. I showed it um, probably twice, but that tool, it's an excellent way to answer your question. Um, so in the tool, there was a question about what is the effect of the depth of the tile. We moved it to four and then we looked at it changed from a 20% difference at the shallow to a only 5% at the deep. And then if you change the hydraulic conductivity, you will see the answer to the question, but I can tell you what that means. Really changing the saturated conductivity doesn't change it, doesn't change the percentages. So if in that scenario that I showed you, if you have a shallow drain system with the 30 feet spacing, and the difference was 20% faster, it doesn't matter what the case set is. So you could be within the range of going slow to a very fast case set, you're still gonna get 20%. But in terms of inches per day, it's gonna differ because um, even though percentage is the same, the absolute value is gonna vary. So it does affect it, but in terms of percentages, mathematically, it's just the same 20%, but 20% of one is very different than 20% of 50, just to give you a very simple example. Multiply 20% by one or multiply 20% by 50 is very different. So in terms of inches per day yet, it, it makes a difference and you can um, change that number on that drainage intensity tool and you can get the answer, actual answer for your field. But I got lots of good questions, thank you. Perfect. All right. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Dr. Ghani, for presenting. Um, and join us again next week for with uh, Chad Poole, the impact of water stress and genetics on seed selection and nitrogen use. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day.